Right, I'm recording. Is. Chelsea have just drawn one all. I take that and look who is here. Pie face, Love the main man. Out. Shout out to the Mr. Jennings channel. Thank you Keep very much. Going. That's all I needed. Mr. Pie face, thank you. I can't wait to see you again. Last thing, Jorginho, man of the match. Agreed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Point that down Geezer. a bit. Here he is, Mr. McKenna. Chelsea have just drawn one all at Anfield. Oh, shit. So that is a good point. That is a good point for it's Chelsea, considering point. Chelsea were down to 10 men for a whole half. Reese yes. James sent off for conceding a penalty that was rightly given in the end? Yeah, there's got to be the rule looked at, but in this iteration of the rules, correctly sent off. However, it feels unfair, it feels a little bit unjust. And you know what? I think it swung the game in a way because Klopp wants teams to go swing for swing, punch for punch with Liverpool, draws them out. It means that tactically Liverpool can get in behind. We can be, they can be uh, basically elongated as a side. Mm. We can deal with Lukaku when he comes up. I did think that Matip and Van Dijk did well in not giving him too much space. I'm not saying they completely negated him, but you're never going to negate one of the best strikers yeah, in the world. Yeah, You've got to find ways of sort of dampening what he did. Yeah. So he did do that. I also thought some of the decisions that Chelsea made, if you'd made the right decision, the key pass, you'd have opened Liverpool right up. Yeah, we should, have scored, we should have scored more when we were on top. Mm -hmm. We should have gone 2-0 up. But the fact that we went down to 10 men and got a point, that's really good from Chelsea's Huge. perspective. Are you, are you gutted with that? Do you feel like there's, there's two points dropped from Liverpool? Because I'm over the moon. I think uh, before the game, if you said a draw, I'd have thought, OK, I'll take that. But I am a bit disappointed. I'm more disappointed in the fact that Liverpool didn't really create that many clear-cut chances in the second half. Nothing where I go, oh, point blank, save mm. that. Or like, oh, Salah, just put it Lots over. Lots of shots. Were shots. And, but, and that's fine. Mm. They're not shots where I go, we should be taking that. You should be working it a little bit more. I did feel Andy Robertson was a bit off it today. I felt like the two fullbacks could have had a better contribution. Trent sort of make it moving into this new role, which is like um, it's like an inside fullback, if that makes sense. So it's, it's somewhere between what Pep did, where they move into midfield, and where they, they then go out wide. It gives Harvey Elliott space. It gives Salah space. But you guys dealt quite well with Salah as well. Rudy goes. Very good at doing that. Yeah, I mean, it got it got quite spicy between the two teams. Well, I enjoyed it. it. it seems That's to what be, I want. Yeah, there seems to be an element of um, like antipathy from the players. I think it all started off the back of the penalty going in. I think Salah scores the penalty. Mendy tries to kick the ball away, which hit Jordan Henderson, mm -hmm. and that kind of sparked. It lit a fuse, didn't it? And that fuse continued into the second half, and it got fairly fiery. Yeah. Um, but I overall, I think Liverpool will be. A little bit disappointed, but then taking a but point off the European champions isn't a bad point either. Here's the interesting thing. The reason I think they're not disappointed is because it, it wasn't a thrashing either way. I also think Liverpool go away from home or at home and go, we can win this. And both sides did look like they had the ability to win that game. So it's not like Liverpool dominated Chelsea. They dominated mm. them for a reason, but it wasn't really a fair fight. It wasn't like Chelsea dominated Liverpool to such a degree. I also think it's so difficult to read a Liverpool game because Liverpool want you to come onto them. Mm. They want you to be in that space. We want to hunt you down and get the ball back and then play the way we play. Yeah. So it's very difficult to go, oh, well, you know, Chelsea created this because well, we want you to. We want you to come into that space and make, make something and then we can go down the other end. Yeah. That's kind of the point. Do, do you feel like that front three got it going enough today? Are you, did, you expect no, you expect more from, did, did, did you expect more from them? Do you think that... You, you should have got more change out of Chelsea. Chelsea had to make a lot of substitutions. You know, our goal scorer had to come off yeah. at half-time. We then had to bring on Kovacic, so we lost Kante. Yeah, yeah you Thiago Silva come on. Thiago Silva came on for a half. He was brilliant, wasn't he, when he yeah, came on? Yeah, he was really good. Yeah. He, he did he really the well. Line. That's awesome. He did really well because at those moments where you're up against it, there isn't a better person to have at your disposal, is there? <laughs> and having somebody like him to come on, steady the ship, was brilliant. But overall... It's a really good point from our perspective. Do you think going forward, this is a good point for, for Liverpool to build on? Do you think that Klopp will look at this as a point where you can, you can use the point secured against Chelsea to go on to bigger things? Or do you think this is one that you will look back on and think two points dropped? Also, in the context of seeing what United have done and what City have done in terms of games not going their way, mm. both sides will think, OK we can see there's weaknesses in other teams as well. Mm. I think this is the most open between the top four that we've seen in a while. So dropping points will be more normal this season. Right. Even if you're still in the race. Yes. So it changes, thing, it changes the perspective a little bit. When the big boys play each other, when you say, I'd expect when a you lot say of this result, When you take this result as a whole, it's actually a very good point. Because if you look at Liverpool, say, first three games, mm -hmm. seven points out of nine is fine, isn't it? Not only that, but when you look at what, uh, what happened last season, I think this team is still building back confidence, still building back 
an identity, or at least that solid identity. Yes. So I get it. We should be disappointed today. We didn't win because we were at home at Anfield against ten men against Chelsea. Mm. We should have made, we should have put a bit more pressure on them. At the same time, we're three games in. I'm not going to lose my head. They're good. No, uh, they can't hear anything. But um, at this, at, at the same time, you're not going to get to any point in, in three games into the season going. Oh, the title's gone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Who were the standout performers for you today from a Liverpool perspective? Uh, I think the midfield were good. I do think Fabinho is really key in there for Liverpool. John Matip, I saw, I think very often he goes under the radar because people go, Virgin Van Dijk's fantastic, isn't he? Marshall's the back line. Matip makes that a lot easier. And there's a reason Klopp loves him is because he is just as strong as Van Dijk, I think, if not, you know, stronger at this point uh, because Van Dijk's still coming back. Um, I do think Trent could improve and I'm always impressed with Harvey Elliott but I think Klopp keeps him on just a fraction too long. He starts to make poor passes, poor decisions where the ball's easily cut out. The fans get a bit frustrated and it, people begin to go, you need to come off, you need to come off, it's, you need to come it's, off. It's, it's very hard for somebody like Elliott, as, as brilliant a player as he is, it's very hard for him, isn't it? Because he's up against Kante, Jorginho, Kovacic. Like, these are some of the best in the world. It's a great way position. to cut your teeth. It's a great way to cut your teeth but you're cutting your teeth in... A game with so much jeopardy. Like, mm -hmm. do you think it's right to throw him in the deep end like that? I, d I, I think if Klopp didn't think he was ready, then why would he put him in there? You've got, you've got so other. Do people. you think it's right to think he's ready though? He looks, he looks like he's meshing really well with Salah. He's giving Salah a lot more space. Right. Salah sits. There are a couple of back heels early on where he was the overlap, and it allows Trent to sit a little bit deeper, deliver crosses from a De Bruyne type position. I'm not saying he's like Kevin De Bruyne, mm. but if no, you look at the, if you look where the heat map is, him and Kevin De Bruyne when they put that. It's not, quite, it's not that wide right, mm. it's the inside right they whip it in from. Yeah. That's where he's putting the crosses in from now. And that's because Harvey Elliott is the one who's getting his chalk, uh, chalk on his boots. And then you've got Salah who's sort of just inside that. So there's a few options there and it stretches the side. It must be exhausting to play against. Yeah, so we are now going, we're now three games in, we're going into an international break. At the mm -hmm. beginning of this season, you believe that Liverpool could win the Premier League. Yes. Now, what, from everything you've seen, Going into this break, we've seen three games against three different oppositions. We'll some at home, some away. Do you still believe that Liverpool can win the league? Yeah, we'll be in the mix. And do you think it's the the contenders that you thought beforehand? Is yes. it Chelsea, City, yeah. United, man? Well, they've just bought Ronaldo. Like, I, I think that's going to take them up a little bit further. And I do think they could have pushed a little harder last season against City. Yeah, like they could have chased them down a little bit more. And I think that chase, they've got. They seem to have. It's not like an anger to them. I do think Ronaldo will bring a spiteful, like, sort of, we need to win this game element. But I do think that when you look at Manchester United, they seem to almost be enjoying what they're going through now. Mm. And I remember seeing that at Liverpool, just on the cusp of things. You saw that yeah, at Chelsea, yeah, yeah. Just, just on the cusp of... Starts, yeah. Just when it's about to start. You can see the players all have this sort of, oh, mm. this works. They yeah, do yeah. seem to have that about them. It's true. When you add Ronaldo into that, I know a lot of people are doing this last dance. Um, <laughs> you don't uh, like that, like, do you? Well, I don't like it because it doesn't seem like an accurate comparison. Yeah. Michael Jordan's the greatest athlete of all time in terms of like uh, global scale. <laughs> but the point is with that, it's apt because they have now that sharpening factor that comes in and goes, that needs to be better. Mm. This could be improved. This is how you strike the ball. Here's how this works. Yeah. You are, imagine Ronaldo in training saying to Greenwood, that's right, you oh, are one of the best players. He's going to become training. That is going to be incredible. Remember when Thierry Henry went back to Arsenal? He yeah. didn't quite have that impact. That but goal saw, against Leeds, wasn't it? It's that goal yeah. against Leeds. But it was that you saw Theo Walcott change a little bit. Mm. You saw his, his approach to the game. You sort of try and put it around goalkeepers in the way that Henri yeah. would. Some people started playing a bit differently. There was a different swagger to them because they remembered. There is that element of still trying to revive a little bit of what Sir Alex left in the club. Yeah. And it doesn't still seem to be there. That's partly why McTominay seems so important and other figures like that. It's, yeah, so I see. I see. So it's, it's the four as we were. Having said that, I really do think that Lukaku is a massive factor in this. Yeah. Like, he's so good, so good. at keep, holding up the ball. And even if it is just about, it's about keeping the centre backs constantly engaged yeah, yeah. and constantly in trouble. That's what you need now. It's so, it's so good. There's so many teams that could do it. But, but for us, can I it's a say, point of peace, Can I just say one thing? Mason Mount has gone under the radar so, so far this season. And See, it's because maybe we take the, the turn, but not only that, like the drives, the fact that he wanted to run at Matip. Amazing he man. got me worried. He's an amazing But he man. goes under the radar. No one else seems to be mentioning I Mason Mount. I, right love, him. Oh, yeah, I love him. I yeah. love him. Mm. But Lodge, it's a point of peace. Our teams are neck and neck in the league. You don't need to wrap No, you can wrap up. Um, yeah, our they teams are. are neck and neck in the but league. But who goes ahead? Who's, who finishes higher at the end of the season, Rory? Chelsea do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a like if you have. Click subscribe. See you all in a bit, Mr. McKenna. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you so much.